doing, baby? Happy Sunday. And today on Coffee and Conversation with your girl, Shaw Kenya. When you get a minute, go to that YouTube channel, Shaw Kenya. And hit subscribe, guys. Look at some of the videos. And if you see any of them that you like, just hit share. I know, no, I didn't go to church today. But I'm telling you, I, I did watch a powerful sermon today on social media. And it was enough for me to be like, okay, I feel I don't feel so bad because I should have got up and went this morning. I got so much to be thankful for. Yeah, I should have took my butt to church, but I did not go. But Pastor, I want to say Pastor Lawrence Levy. If if he's not a pastor, I think he should, I'm not familiar with him. I'm following now on Facebook, but he's he's he said a prayer in a parking lot of what looked like might be a hospital from what I'm gathering about an incident that happened. A shooting of no less, you know, I'm so tired of hearing about shootings. I blacked out for this last week or so. I'm not even going to hold you up. People been running up on me asking if I heard about this shooting and that shooting. And I can, I know I have not. And they looking at me like I'm crazy, right? Because I should know. I should be watching the news every day because typically I do. But I've been caught up in that show, Sisters. I wake up to it. I go to sleep to it. When I wake up, I rewind where I fell asleep. And it just had, took me away from all this. Because I'm tired of hearing about it every day. You know, I'm, I'm 51. So at this stage of the game, I keep going back to that. I keep referencing my age to you so you'll know how long I've been on this earth and how much, how many changes should be made in our culture or should have been made. And all the unaliving of each other, that should have stopped a long time ago. That should have stopped about 30 years ago. Yep, in my early 20s, we should have been coming together and everything and raising our kids to love one another. So today, I want to know, are you a good person? Mm-hmm. Are you a good person? That's all. Yep. Are you teaching your kids to be good people? Yep, simple. Say, so what are we doing in the basement, Shakenya? Well, today I'm finishing up projects. And as y'all know, I started on my other half of my basement. I want a theater system over here. So I moved a pool table from over there. My closet was here. Now my closet is upstairs. And I'm repairing the wall. You know, it was a black wall over here. It's kind of, it wasn't sturdy. So I put some drywall up. And some of y'all seen me do that. But my followers don't know that this is what I do. Yeah, they probably went on the I'm girl, I'm just a girl page. But if you think about it, I don't never do no videos while I'm doing this. Yeah, y'all see me in the office, I do videos. Y'all see me at the Myers gas station, I'm doing a video. Y'all see me at the different diners doing videos. But my followers don't know when I talk about building stuff, this type of stuff that I do. I do great drywall, painting and drywall. So I'm fixing my own house. I'm finishing up projects at my own house. That's on my list of things to do. That list I tell y'all to make for yourself. Yeah, finishing up projects in my house. Making my house comfortable. A little baby matching. <laughs> Somewhere where I can come and kick my shoes off. And, and don't have to go nowhere if I don't want to, right? So, I like shooting pool. I got a pool table. This is a pool area that I'm creating, right? So, that's what I'm doing. But are you teaching your children not to lie? Oh, that's a big one. Oh. I know I run into so many people that just be lying. Like, what you? Why you like to lie, Craig? <laughs> yeah, are you teaching your children not to lie? Are you teaching your children not to steal? Do they know the consequences of their actions? Do you teach them about not stealing? Not taking something that don't belong to them? Ask before you get something from somebody. You know, ask first. Don't just take from nobody. People work too hard for their stuff. Do you talk to them like that? Because you just can't say it. Sometimes you got to back it up with something. You got to give them proof. You got to tell them why you say what you say. So they'll understand fully. Why you saying it? 
You know, yeah, ask them, put them in that position. Ask them how they'll feel if somebody took that game console or that little game mode control or something that they hold dear and precious. And then ask them how they'll feel about that. That's how you help them develop a conscience. I always tell my kids before they leave the house, make good decisions. So if they don't hear nothing else ringing in their head when they leave my house or leave my presence, they heard me say, make good decisions while you out there. No matter what it is, no matter what's going on, you worry about you. You make good decisions, right? You get home safe, right? Teaching them the consequences of their actions. Are you enforcing discipline? And however that means or whatever that looks like, look like to you. When they do something wrong, you know, do you do you catch it instantly? Do you do something about it right then or there? Right then and there, right? Not letting it go on and on and they keep doing it. Or do you check them right then and there and let them know what they're doing and why it's considered wrong to do? And then do you punish for that? What form of discipline do you use? Is it verbal? Is it physical? What you do? You put them on punishment? Do you take away their privileges for a period of time? Do you put them in time out? They can't go to the homecoming dance. They can't go to the prom. They can't do this they can't because of what they did. Consequences of what they did. Do you pop them? <laughs> Shit. We can't let that go out of style. Oh, God, I know CPS got you creeped out. I know, I know. Because you ain't supposed to be just physically just abusing a baby. But I think you might need to get clarification on them pops. Because sometimes you just got to pop them. Real quick. Because it ain't nothing else you can nothing you can say sometimes. Sometimes it's just a matter of... Mm. <laughs> However way you choose the discipline, just make sure it's there, right? Make sure it's instilled. Um, do you teach them to do what's right when nobody's looking? Break down to them certain times, like this one, teaching them to do what's right when nobody's looking. Like, do you actually break that down to them so they'll know that what exactly what do that mean? Like, act like somebody watching you all the time. Like, it shouldn't take nobody watching you for you to do what's right. You know what I mean? It shouldn't be because ain't nobody here. Let me go on and take this. Ain't nobody gonna see me. You know, it should. They shouldn't have that type of attitude, right? You want your children to be honest. I want my children to be honest. Right? So, yeah. <laughs> what about to treat people like you want to be treated? Yeah, do you give them examples? Like I say, put them in that place. What if somebody did that to you? How would you feel? You wouldn't like it too much, would ya? No. Are you teaching your children to be kind to others? Nice, kind. Speak to people when you see them. Ask them how they doing, right? It's nice and kind. You, know, you ain't raising them to be soft. You don't want them to be soft. <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't raising them to be soft. No. I taught my kids how to stand their ground. I taught my kids how to take up for themselves. I taught them kids to stand up for what's right. I taught my kids and I taught them how to be kind. <laughs> be kind. Be nice. Do nice things for people. And don't look for nothing in return. Are you teaching them to share? Y'all follow my I'm just 
to girl page, you'll be able to see a couple projects that I've done from beginning to end. Might be able to teach you something. Yeah. I'll definitely show you step by step how to put up the drywall. I think I'll put this up live so you'll be able to see it start to finish. Um, are you teaching your children to say they're sorry when they're wrong? Apologize. Apologize to that man. Apologize to that woman when you do something wrong, right? You teaching them that? You teaching them to hold themselves accountable? Admit when they're wrong? Are you teaching them to right their wrong? If given opportunity to do so. Are you teaching your children to give people credit where credit is due? Like give people their flowers while they're here. Are you teaching them that when they apologize, that they have to change behavior? So they're not giving out empty apologies. They're actually giving out apologies and then they're changing the behavior behind it. That go hand in hand. I just want to make sure you're teaching them that when you um when you're teaching them about apologizing and holding themselves accountable. Yeah, I think I'm gonna start on the wall today. Yeah, see where my coats and stuff at? They're they gonna be upstairs. I'm gonna take them upstairs today. And I'm going to build a wall. <laughs> no, I ain't. Oh, damn. Ah, too soon. <laughs> too, 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 too soon. But no, actually, I am. I got to build a wall to separate the pool area from where I'm going to put the, the theater at. So, yeah, I'm going to build one today. I know. Wasn't meant to be a joke. I didn't even have it in the book. I'm just telling you what I'm doing today. I know it's... <laughs> We're a little sensitive right now. I know. I ain't gonna even build it today. Nah, nah, man. Nah, man. Shit. I might not even build one now. Nah, I don't even want I'll just put up a curtain. I ain't gonna even put up no wall. I don't even want to. I oh, know, I'm still traumatized. I'm still traumatized. Damn, I'm about to cry. Okay, um, shoot. Teach your children to vote. <laughs> teach them the importance of voting. Uh, are you teaching them to love themselves? Yes. Take care of themselves. Take care of their bodies. Take care of their mind. Take care of their soul, right? Make sure they're eating properly, right? Love on themselves enough to eat properly, right? Make sure they, the, the weight. Make sure they ain't gaining a whole bunch of weight, you know, putting all that wear and tear and stress on their arteries, right? Make sure they're not using drugs and alcohol, right? Make sure make sure they love on each other, love on themselves and love on each other. You teach them to love other people. Teach them to love themselves so much to where if they need mental health treatment, they'll go get it. If they physically need some help, they'll go to the doctor. Just love on yourself. Love yourself. Put yourself first, right? And then you can love others. Yup. But they got to get that love from home. They got to get all that love from home. Yeah. That's the only way they know how to do it. That's the only way they know it's real, right? They get that same feeling when they're around other people, right? They got to get it from home. So you got to love on the babies. So they'll be able to express it to others. Are you teaching your children how to be supportive? How to be a helpmate to people? Whether they be in a relationship, whether they be friends, just supportive of people, supportive of their friends, right? Being happy for them in their moment. Do you teach your children that? Not to be jealous or envious of people. For them to be happy for people in their moment. Congratulate people. And 
And as far as being supportive, just be in there for one another, right? You got a friend that got a business. Yeah, you're supposed to be happy for your friend. Why? Because you've seen your friend struggle. You've seen your friend had an idea first that this is what they want to do. Then you've seen them use their last to invest and do this and do that in themselves. And now you see it growing, right? You should be right there cheerleading for that friend. You shouldn't be in the corner mad and bitter. Look at them because they don't rise up. Rise up from where they came from, though, right? So you should be feeling that pain and that struggle that they went through. And you should be feeling it so much so to where you just as happy for them as they are. As if it is you, right? Not being mad and bitter because it ain't you and you ain't put in no work. You ain't did nothing. You ain't did nothing on your dream. You, ain't did, you don't even want to do what they doing. <laughs> That's how the devil works. You don't even, even want to do what they doing. You just mad that it ain't you. Just mad. Just to be mad, right? No, that person put in all that work, all that time, all that effort to be who they are. Yep, you should be that cheerleader. You're supposed to be supporting them. Yep, you're supposed to be sharing their stuff. Every day you're supposed to share something with your friends. If you got five friends that has businesses or five family members that you know that have businesses or five people that you went to school with or five people that you work with, five people that you know of color that has a business, you should be sharing it on your page. At least five people, businesses of color, you should be supporting them and sharing them on your page. Every day. Every day. You should turn into that PR person. Why? Because that's your brother. That's your sister. That's your coworker. That's your friend. That's somebody of color that's trying to make it. They're trying to get out. <laughs> They're trying to get out. Why, why wouldn't you support them? Why wouldn't you share their stuff on social media so other people can get a whiff of what they got going on? Ain't no telling where that might take them. Yeah, the people that you know, the prominent people on your page that they don't know, that they don't follow, the amount of followers that you have. Yeah, why you not? Why you not sharing? Why you not trying to help them? Why you not trying to support them? Yeah, teach your kids to be better than you. Teach your kids to be better than you. So yeah, teach them to support their friends and be there for their friends. Yeah, and their family members. Right. Um, teach them not to be jealous, not to be envious. Let them know they can do it too. Yeah, you can support somebody and what they're doing and how they, you know, move or whatever. And you can do your own thing too. Too, right? You ain't got to be jealous of nobody. I'm glad my grandma taught me that when I was young. She said, you can do it too. You ain't got to be jealous of them. That's for them. Yeah, she used to tell me that. She said as a kid. So imagine that as a kid. <laughs> you don't want to hear that. <laughs> grandma, I just want what they got. I don't want to hear what you're talking about. And she said, what, what, why, why you, you can get it too? What's meant for you is for you. That's meant for them. You don't know what they had to go through and what they had to do to get what they got. You don't know that. You don't, you wasn't there, right? So, yeah, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. I was going to say, teach them that the world don't revolve around them, but I didn't write that down. I'm just being funny. Yeah, because some of y'all raise these kids up to be entitled. And then when they get out here in the real world, they can't maintain and they can't get through and they can't make it because ain't nothing being handed to them. And they realize they got to work hard for everything. Teach them that they got to work hard for everything. Yep, work hard for everything that you want. Yep. Uh, ain't nothing going to come to you. These are just little things that we might miss. That's all. Because I can't get into the syllabus. It's Sunday. Um... Teach your kids not to count people's pockets. I know that might sound crazy to you, and you might not think that that's a big deal, but it affects them when they get older. Yeah, they mind frame, the way they think about certain things. Yeah, when you count other people's pockets and worried about them, yeah, teach them to worry about their own self. But yeah, when they worry about other people, people yeah, I had to do an experiment with my son because he used to do that <laughs> until we went on a job together. Yeah, we went on a job that he got, right? So... He was in charge that day. So all that day, I was calling him boss, right? Whatever he needed me to do, I did, right? He told me how much he was going to pay me. I was expecting my pay at the end of work. We was good. So whatever he told me to do, so whenever they would come to me and ask questions, I would point them to the boss man, right? So that boss man had to make sure we had gas to get to where we was going. That boss man had to answer all the questions. I ain't had to answer nothing. That boss man had to make sure he had the materials that we needed for that job. And that boss man had to add all that up, including my pay. When the boss man seen how much all that was, I ain't had no problem with my son uh, no more after that. 
when it comes to counting pockets and wanting half and wanting this and that because they know how much the job is worth and things of that. Uh-uh. That ain't what it is. You got to add all this up too when you're doing work and when you're the boss and when you got to take care of stuff. So yeah, I had to put him in assimilation because we, we had that problem. So teach your children, stop counting people's pockets. Um, stop worrying about what everybody else is doing. Worry about themselves. Do you teach your children to encourage people? To be encouraging. Encourage people to do stuff. Had to make sure them screws were synced in there. Yeah, you got to get it right up under the drywall. So it don't come through the mud when you're covering it up. 